Hi, it's Mark Bosser from Top Local Lead Generation. We're here today with Paul Toffoli and we're going to be ta answering some common Vancouver real estate questions and today's question is what are authorized and unauthor unauthorized suites? How are you doing today, Paul? I'm well, Mark. Yourself? I'm good. Really good. So, what are unauthorized and authorized suites and what's the difference? Sure. So why don't I, I'll back up a little bit and I'll just generally talk about uh, um, you know, housing in Vancouver, as we talked about the last time, is, is expensive. And many families uh, who live in single family homes or in condos try to find ways to subsidize those costs. So that could be everything from someone who has a, a student living with them uh, in a room and provides them meals and gets some money, or someone like myself who has a a suite in their home that uh, that they rent out on a monthly basis, whether it's furnished or unfurnished, and um, you know it's it's a it's a good way to uh, recoup some of that investment. So uh, um, and so then the next question that that you alluded to is okay. We hear a lot of talk about an unauthorized suite versus an authorized suite. What's the difference? And it really comes down to bylaws and uh, zoning and bylaws in different. And of course, each municipality will have its own tweaks. Uh, you know, the city of Vancouver will be slightly different than city of Burnaby or, or Richmond, etc. But I can do some generalizations, and then I can maybe talk a bit specifically about uh, Vancouver, which is the one I know best. Um, but generally. In the Lower Mainland, uh, municipal governments have been encouraging of secondary suites in housing because um, housing is expensive, and they want we need to find ways to house people, whether it's students or people on lower incomes um, or people on higher incomes who aren't ready to buy a property. Uh, there's a shortage of of rental properties and suites are one way of doing it. So in the city of Vancouver specifically, which is the one I know best, uh, RS1 zoning um, is one of the main uh, single family zoning types and that will allow a primary residence with a secondary suite, which would typically be a basement suite, and in the last couple of years they've also allowed people to build a coach home or a carriage house that would have rental accommodation in it as well. Often when people are looking at buying properties, you know, unless it's a brand new property, it often won't have a coach house in it. So we'll just talk about basement suites at the moment. Um, people will go into a, into a basement suite and say, well, how can I tell if this is authorized or unauthorized? In order to be authorized, it has to, the work to convert it to a suite has to have been done with permits from the city, so building permits like you would do for any other reno, and there's certain regulations that those permits require. And those are really aimed at safety and health. So uh, some of the ones that, that I'm aware of, uh, the minimum height on an exit route, so going through the doors, uh, from you know, so if in the middle of the night there's a fire, somebody jumps out of bed and they have to get out, the minimum height is six foot six going through the lowest points on the way out. Um, there has to be interconnected smoke detectors between the upstairs and the basement suite. Um, there needs to be um, separation, fire separation between the upstairs and the downstairs. So there's lots of different things that go into um, making it something that's legal, but the main thing is that the work has to have been done with permits and it has to be on record at the city. If it was not done with permits, or it's not on record at the city, then it's not authorized. What are the repercussions of that if it's not an authorized unauthorized suite? That's that's the big question. Uh, first of all, if you have those physical things, if you have the right heights downstairs, and you can take it through the process to make it authorized, it may be well worth your time and energy to do that, because it takes any risk away, um, you know, and what's the risk? The risk is that you get a complaint from a dissatisfied tenant, or you get a complaint 
from a neighbor because there's too many cars parked in front of the house or there's noise or you know whatever the reason and the city comes in and says guess what you can't rent this out it's not authorized um, and then all of a sudden that revenue source is gone and if you counted on that money to help you pay your mortgage um, guess what all of a sudden things get a lot uh, less comfortable in addition, there's costs to to doing those changes, to getting the permits and making sure that everything's done to code and done properly. There's costs. Now, it's a lot less onerous now to put in a secondary suite than it used to be. It used to be that you have to you would have to sprinkler the whole house, which was to be very expensive. Now you don't have to do that as long as you meet some of those other uh, those other uh, rules and regulations. Uh, does that uh, sort of answer it in a nutshell? Absolutely. So then I guess that's the general sort of picture across probably with some sub changes in, you know, Burnaby, Richmond, etc. But how would you actually find out what those rules are in those other municipalities? How do I check it? Sure, that's great. So the easiest thing to do is all the municipalities have websites. Uh, so first of all, talk to your realtor who's familiar with the areas. Uh, you know, I'm going to have that information usually at my fingertips in terms of um, uh, being able to tell you. But also, I can you know you can do it yourself or you can talk to me. Um, go on to the city of Vancouver website. Go onto the city of Richmond website. Go onto the district of North Van, city of North Van websites. They have all of their bylaws, uh, zoning bylaws that state whether suites are allowed and then you can dig deeper into those zoning bylaws and uh, find out uh, what's you know what's required to make a suite legal um, it, it's not rocket science uh, the cities are very open about it they want people to know the rules they want people to get informed um, but I would say as a, as a buyer uh, probably one of the first things to do would talk to a realtor talk to myself Talk to somebody who's familiar with those neighborhoods, who's familiar with those bylaws, um, and get the information so that when you're walking th into homes, you understand, you know, okay, this one's authorized, that's great, I don't have to worry about it anymore, or this one's unauthorized, could it be made authorized if I had to or if I wanted to, um, uh, you know, and also there can be insurance questions around that, you know, you need to talk to your insurance broker. Um, I'm living in a single family home. It has an unauthorized suite or it has an authorized suite. Uh, make sure those declarations are on your policy because if you have a loss and the insurance company finds out that they didn't have all the correct information on their policy, guess what? They may disallow that loss uh, or that coverage. So um, that's another thing that you really need to be clear about. Working with professionals who know all the all the T's to cross and the I's to dot uh, so that you get your insurance covered, that you get everything dealt with before you remove your subjects and, and, uh, and are committed to buying that property. Absolutely. So I guess the other thing that comes up is if you go to the city and it's, uh, you know, you're going to convert it from authorized or unauthorized to authorized, then do your taxes go up? Depends on the municipality. That's a really good question. So, um, in in the city of Vancouver, uh, you're or in all cities. If you've got an authorized suite, you're required to get a, a business license, which is inexpensive. I think it's like thirty-five or something like that per month, uh, per year, I should say. Um, but you may your your utility costs will probably go up. So you'll be paying for extra garbage collection. You'll be paying a little bit extra for water and so forth. In some areas, your property taxes may go up, but it's more driven by the utility costs than it is the housing value. But again, it, you have to check with the different uh, d the different municipalities to see how they assess those things. Uh, BC Assessment is the one who who assesses the value of a property, uh, so they're going to take into account that it's got a secondary suite, and they're going to say they'll probably add a little value for that. Um, so it will it will go up, but also when you go to sell your property, um, it's easier for the banks to finance because it's an authorized suite. Uh, they're going to be more comfortable using the revenue from that 
uh, so your buyers are going to be capable or more comfortable paying a little bit more than they would maybe with an unauthorized suite. So that's something else to take into account. So I guess the last kind of question that pops into my mind, and this is more a function of where we live, um, we're surrounded by, and we ourselves, we you know, it's a sandwich house. Yeah. There's three generations. You know, our kid, one of our kids is living with us, and you know, my grand, my my parents are, you know, was just the easiest way to look after them as they're in their 80s. And I know that there's, we're surrounded by houses that is exactly the same, multiples. Yeah. So how does that? Does that factor so that, into that this is, at all? That is a question because, you know, certainly uh, the municipalities and the bylaws are more um, open to having multi-generational multi families because you're right, that is, that is very much, that's very important. Uh, particularly culturally, you'll have a lot of cultures, Asian cultures, well, you'll get three or four generations living in the same home. It's very common. And because of affordability also, it's becoming... Uh, uh, local uh, residents, uh, people who grew up here like yourself and myself, uh, we're starting to see the extended family living in. Uh, you know, I've got young kids. I've got an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. I'm not sure how old they'll be when they move out. Uh, it might be another 20 years or 25, 30 years. Who knows? Um, so municipalities are open to that. What we are seeing is that they used to have uh, more what they would call in-law suites and so forth. Uh, they seem to be doing away with that. Again, it depends on the specific municipality. Um, but one of the big things is uh, it's driven by the number of kitchens you have in a home. So they'll allow you to have one, you know, with a secondary suite, if you have a kitchen in there uh, and somebody's cooking in there, that's considered a secondary suite. If you have something that's, you know, just got a door that's locked and it's got a bedroom and maybe a wet bar, that may not, may not be considered a suite. So, uh, you know, that might be perfect for somebody who's got uh, parents or older kids that come up and use the family kitchen, uh, you know, also that, or nannies, right, that's another, another situation where somebody may eat with the family but have their own so sort of separate locked off area. That typically wouldn't be considered a suite. Uh, it would be more just, you know, separate living quarters, but it's not a suite. So um, the big thing that people look at, you know, is, or the cities will look at is has extra square footage been added onto the house and that's where they get quite cranky if people are adding extra square footage onto a house or taking a garage that's supposed to be required for parking and converting that into uh, secondary accommodation or a second or third suite in a house then municipalities tend to get a little cranky because uh, you know you're using extra utilities you've got safety aspects there's on-street parking hassles uh, that become uh, problematic. So it, it's just layer after layer uh, that you can peel back. So it's, it's really important to be working with someone who uh, can talk you through the concerns and the risks and, and you know you may decide you want to take the risk of having an unauthorized suite but you have to understand what that risk is. So uh, getting properly informed, that's really the key to all of this. That's great, Paul. I really appreciate this. This is um, important information that I think a lot of people kind of brush over and don't know what they're getting into until it's kind of almost too late. So we've been talking with Paul Toffoli. You can reach him at toffoli.ca or 604-787-6963. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Mark.